Good evening, I'm Ryan. I'm Will slash Wilf slash Wilfred. And I'm 100% of Faithful, I'm Ivan. And tonight we analyze, we laugh, and we gossip over the Traitors US. This is episode one of It's Just a Game. Welcome to It's Just a Game. This is the first episode of a brand new podcast where we watch reality so you don't have to. On my side is Wilf. Will, Hello. how do we call you? I don't even know, mate. I feel like whatever's best, you call me Dave. Double you. <laughs> Can I call you Daddy? <laughs> well, and here's Daddy. I'm Daddy. Uh, I'm Ivan. I watch reality TV and I have things to say about it. Same. Right, uh, you may be wondering, why do we need another three straight white men hosting a podcast? <laughs> I have no idea. I think that it's... it's yourself, mate. I know. <laughs> um, do you know what? I think that we've all been there, done it, and got the T-shirt. So I think it's important for other people to be able to hear hear opinions of the people that have been there. And actually, we we were on an amazing show. And I think we'll be able to pick apart and hopefully, like, I want to do predictions and stuff. Right, guys. This show is all about reality TV, so be warned. There will be spoilers ahead. If you haven't seen episodes one to four of The Traitors US, go home, watch it, come back. If you have seen these episodes, don't worry. There will be no spoilers for episode five and above. Um, but still go home. And listen to the podcast. <laughs> um, now, guys, there's a lot we have to discuss, but I want to start with one big question, which really you got to ask about any TV show. Um, who are your favorites? Favorite traitor, oh. favorite faithful, Wilf? Okay, so we're going to start, right, so my favourite faithful is, right, <laughs> let me get my sheet because I'm not very good at names. <laughs> so obviously I've only watched the first four episodes, obviously you can binge watch it, you can watch all the episodes at once, but my life's been a bit crazy, so I have watched the first four. Um, Siri, Siri is my favourite traitor. From the at the beginning, I wasn't 100% sure if she was going to be my favourite, but she, at the moment, from the four episodes, she is my favourite faithful, and you've told us to pick one. And I hate that you've told me to pick one. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to say Quentin. I just think he's intelligent. He tries to, he's trying to pick apart different things and trying to come up with different logics. People go in there. We've been there. People go in there. They see a crumb. They jump on it, right? He's trying to look at something different, a wider picture. And yeah, I just think he's he's my favourite in terms of... not a single watch. correct vote so far. I know, but... And Michael, I've had to throw Michael in now, I'm sorry. Oh, Michael that was is, too, mate, you broke the rules. I'm so, should, so sorry, just, I had to uh, do the it. Doors this way. I'm so me. sorry, but Michael, Michael, <laughs> listen, Michael, I love that man. Okay? Oh, he didn't do the accent. <laughs> I love that man. I Cancel think he's him. great. I think he's great. <laughs> but, yeah, I think... Ivan, favourite yeah, traitor, favourite faithful. Uh, okay, so, series already been said, but clearly fantastic, I mean, well on top of the game. So I'm going to go Christian. Um, he's playing it well. He's extra. He's big. He's going in for it. He's not holding back. And uh, clearly, I've... you've got the same hairdresser. Yeah, thanks. We <laughs> do. Yeah, <laughs> the hairdresser was called No Hairdresser. It's called Just Leave It for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, you know, I don't necessarily approve of his strategy, but he's good fun to watch. Yeah. Um, and Andy, probably my favourite. Um, faithful. Just think they're legitimate. Think they're lovely. Um, yeah. So far, would 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 like to see them go quite a long way. They're definitely holding their cards quite close to their chest in terms of just like not playing it too early, which was, um, you know, it, it, it's a strategy that works as long as people don't think you're being lazy. Yeah. Ryan, who is your favourite traitor and faithful? <laughs> Look, uh, it's a tough one, but honestly, I can't not say Siri. She's incredible. Like, she's been dominating the game, taking people where she needs them. Like, so far, she's done really well, and I reckon she could do really, really well. Um, favorite faithful. Oh, I want to say Michael. Like he's just so funny, and we'll talk about this. But his exit in episode four is the most incredible Amazing. exit in the history of the traitors. No, 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 no. no. Ivan's was, but to be fair. Michael in the U.S. <laughs> traitors. Yeah, we'll, we'll give him that. M Michael, Michael did well so far. I've not seen the rest, but yeah. But since you picked Michael, I might also say Amanda, just because she's made a few small comments that make me think, oh, she's smart. She's hiding something. Um, she could go far in the game. Can we talk about how Scottish the show is, please? Is that is that something we can talk about right now? What's his name? What's his name? Fergus. 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 I want Fergus in my life. Yeah. Like I was so jealous when there was this random bearded guy. <laughs> just polishing. Just, just polishing yeah, a deer. Just, just playing with a peacock at one point. I'm pretty sure. I was just like, I was like, 
Where was Fergus Foss? Honestly, I just think Fergus to uh, polish my stag. <laughs> what? I just, there's, a, there's a thing where they've gone, right, how, how Scottish is appropriate? Right, double it, and then double it. Take away the first time you... Well, double it again first. Then, and then they've gone, okay, so Alan Cumming has a Scottish accent, but somehow he sounds like he's putting on a Scottish, Scottish accent. Yeah. Like, and to, he wears so much, yeah. so and much Scottish outfit. And they've gone, who's the only Scottish person in any portrayal of anything we've ever seen? Oh, Braveheart and Groundskeeper Willie. We can't have Braveheart. <laughs> Imagine having Mel Gibson. So in Freedom! <laughs> they got Groundskeeper Willie. So there he is, polishing a stag, and he, 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 he walks around. Now... I have it on good authority, as in I've chatted to him, that he's actually like, he's got a PhD on the portrayal of Scottish characters in oh my movies. God. So I can't, I really would love to know what he thinks about the portrayal of Scottish characters in The Traitors, because it's fascinating. And I, I feel like a generation of Americans will go away thinking that's what Scottish <laughs> people are like. It was like, because the UK is the UK, England are part of Scotland, they don't need to show... This right, is can Scotland. We go England sorry, is part of England Scotland. Part, explain. Just show sorry, me really sorry. how England's part. <laughs> England, England, and Scotland. Right, where the United Kingdom. Show me the map. Yeah. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but they probably all knew what Scottish people like. But they're like, this is what it's like to live in Scotland. Yeah. We all have this random man <laughs> polishing our peacocks. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That is Everyone so, has one. Yeah. That's yeah. Scotland and in a nutshell. He doesn't even talk. <laughs> he just stands there. I was like. Where is this guy in my life? Sometimes he sits in a boat, right? Oh, he does. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's sat in a boat! He's yeah, in the door. <laughs> <laughs> the guys don't just go around. No. <laughs> Fergus, mate, Fergus. Sorry, Fergus, can you just get in a boat for a long time? Just mind just being in a boat. Sorry, Fergus, can you polish your stag and then can you hold the torch? <laughs> Oh, uh, Fergus was my one of my. Oh. Do you know what? He's my favourite faithful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's 100% a faithful. I hope they paid him more than they paid Alan because I think he puts in the hard work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he right, does. Well, talking about characters, I think something that's so unique about this US edition is that you've got a cast of half celebs, half civilians, and that changes the game. Like yeah. you had Rachel, who immediately knew Cody was a traitor. Uh, obviously, you have Cody recognizing that he's one big brother, so people aren't going to trust him. How, how do you think that impacts the show? How do you think you move on from everyone being a celebrity? And I think I think it's it's really fun to start off with some division, right? You often see this in lots of shows where they start off, they you know, in, in Big Brother series, they just go, oh, right, this one's rich and this one's poor for a week. And immediately then it makes, sort of creates these different divisions and boundaries. So in that sense, I think it's good. But unfortunately, I think where it takes away from that is simply that the celebrities get more airtime. And I was, I, I was really interested in some characters who didn't, at least in the first few episodes, get much airtime and then they were gone. Now that's not to say that celebrities aren't fantastic characters. They are all larger than life. They also know how to play the game and make sure that they are being portrayed in this particular way, which the, the um, civilians don't. So there's just kind of, it feels like two different shows. At okay. least to begin with. Well, are you team celebrity or team civilian? Um, civilian, by far. So um, what I feel, feel like is they, they have an upper hand. Uh, the reason being is, like, when we went on there, right, we went on um, the traitors. We had no idea really what was going on. Mm. We went there. There was camera people. There was cameras here, and there, and everywhere. And when we're just... And there's no overproduction, so we're just getting on with life. It's so much harder not understanding how that is. But for people that have been in that atmosphere, they can act so much more how they want to act. So imagine somebody being chosen as a traitor, right? Who's used to being on camera. They'll probably know how to react better than somebody that doesn't. So I think that they had an upper hand. In my, if that's in my, in my vision, like from what I watched, I feel like the celebrity has, celebrities had a bit of an upper hand in terms of that when you like i know as a traitor i know that wait you're a traitor yeah i was a traitor yeah oh, i don't know if you know that explains, <laughs> that explains so, so much, much. So no, much. I'm sorry so much. Oh. but get away from me it explains you know so when people when people are confident mm. you want to cut them out when people are, appear well from my experience was this person is too confident mm. so maybe being a celebrity was a weakness in that in that aspect you know if somebody's like loud like um Reza. Yeah, Reza's yeah. celebrity, right? He was celebrity, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. yeah I, obviously, I don't... Yeah, so, so Reza, I really liked Reza. Mm. I was like, I like him. He's really trying to play the game. But if you try to play the game too much and you're letting too many people know that you're playing the game, that you're going to get murdered. Also, <laughs> if I was in the show, I would want to vote for Siri Fields just so I could say I'd eliminated Siri Fields because I'm a massive <laughs> fan of hers. So I'd be like, oh, she was in Survivor four times. I'm going to vote her out. But yeah, I think, I think personally, like, there, there is a different. There is a divide between yeah. celebrities and 
um, non-celebs, I think. So you never really know how you're going to react to you in that situation, but celebrities probably know how to react in them certain, especially the, um, who is it on Big Brother? Who won Rachel Big Brother? Riley. Rachel. Hmm? Oh, Cody, Cody Co Cody, Cody, yeah. yeah. So he won, he won Big Brother, right? So he's going to know what it's like to be under the spotlight more than most the traitors. He was a perfect traitor, really. And so aspect. after that first round table, Geraldine changed how she was acting. Yeah. And they changed how she I mean, spelt her name. The, the, the one link between all the characters, the one thing that binds them all is, and, and us too, is we can't spell. Yeah, we, we cannot <laughs> Which spell. brings me to my first re re recurring segment, which is called Can You Spell Geraldine? Okay. So, guys, here's how it's going to work, right? It's a little game. I don't want you to spell it correctly. I want you to spell it the way Rachel spelled it in episode one. We're going to do, like do it like a spelling bee. So, Wilf, you're going to take the first letter. J. Uh, Okay. Oh, yeah, no, it is Jay. Good. It's Jay, yeah? It's Jay, yeah. So, so, it's, so just to be clear, this is not how you spell Geraldine, but it's how Rachel Riley spells Geraldine. The person who gets the wrong letter is out, which means the other one wins. So J is the first letter. Second letter. E. Back to Will. R. We're doing great. R. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's you. Is it you? It, it's me, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, was it you? No, it's, shall I, shall I read it? I'll give you yeah, a Yeah, go on, go on. J-E-R-Y-L. D E A N. Oh my That's God! Geraldine. It's an Irish it's Geraldine. A Geraldine. It's, it's Geraldine from <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> I, um, I'm not. I, we all got. We all got all the names wrong in our show too. And it's not to deride not the all. bad spelling. It's to luxuriate in the fact <laughs> that phonetically that does spell Geraldine. What kills me is that in episode two they're voting out Geraldine, and at one point there's like, like the whole music. It's so dramatic, and they're like, and I've gone for. And the guy lifts up a slate and it's just G. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. This takes me on to my point, right? I thought, you know, if you write down someone's name, yeah, you write someone's name down and you decide to change. So, you, so imagine I wrote Ivan down. I thought, actually, I want to vote Ryan, right? I could just lift up Ivan and go, Ryan, just spelt it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> How wrong a spelling can you go? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. We're, we're talking about that first round table and actually... Yeah. You know, on that day, everyone's so eager to play that as soon as the blindfolds come off, everyone is looking around the room, trying to analyze, trying to be like, oh, you had a glass of water, that's suspicious. Oh, you skipped a breath, that's suspicious. And like, people are looking for the tiniest tent. And we did the same mistakes in the UK. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just thinking, is this really a good strategy, looking for the tiniest slip up so early on? Because really, no decent trader well, is going to mess up at that stage. Well, they banished Geraldine for, for the way she reacted at the round table, right? So she took a blindfold off and everyone thought she looked shifty. Um, and it was the same with us. Like, we seen certain people that look shifty. Mm. Uh, and you, a lot of it is chance. Like, a lot of it is chance. And yeah. you, you take a crumb... You make a biscuit. That's what it feels like, but it's an invisible biscuit. It's not real. Like, do you know what I mean? You take I mean, a crumb, you make you an make invisible biscuit. biscuit as yeah, the that, goes, do you know what I mean? That's, that's how gonna, the that's saying goes. That's going to be my goes. new Tinder bio. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's true though, right? Yeah, you take a crumb, you, you make, make an biscuit. invisible <laughs> biscuit. <laughs> we because it's not even real. No. Like, I, like, um, even run for us, like, you have certain people when you, when you watch the American show that, um... Like in the first episode, for instance, like um, Michael was under the microscope quite quickly. Microscope. The microscope, the right? <laughs> but anything the guy said was under suspicion. So it was mm. just like, you know, when you look at the good in people, they everybody just looked in the bad of everyone, and that's that was a, like and one one thing that in our show that Amos said was stop looking at your the traitors, look at the faithfuls, mm. and that probably would have worked a bit better than just looking at anybody who just looks yeah. suspicious or... Do you know what though? In, to answer your question, Ryan, I think the first round table when you first remove the blindfolds is a good time in a sense because the traitors haven't had a full night to be like, okay, 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 here's how I'm gonna look. Here's how I'm gonna smile. Here's, so they, they haven't yet- You're getting a raw reaction. A raw reaction, exactly. Yeah, an invisible, uh, an invisible biscuit, if it's, so, so to speak. So you, so you have to, <laughs> oh, uh, so you, um, yeah, you, know, you, ha you have to try and, um, you know, Without going into our show, I think some of us had some really good intuitions right at the first moment, just because it was a good time to see who wasn't prepared to take that on. No one saw you and thought you were a traitor, so you did great, but other people were less prepared, potentially, and that could, could have given away one or two things. That, that wasn't shown on the edit. I looked like the biggest traitor. <laughs> like, after that round table, I looked like a traitor. And but yet no one noticed. No, no one noticed. That's because, yeah, I, 
Well, it was the case. I was going to say you it literally had a green cloak on. How did we not notice? <laughs> I know. You sat there in a green cloak. You had a bloody knife in your hand. Like, <laughs> yeah. Literally had a bloody knife. Yeah, yeah, I know. And everyone had holes in their backs. Sorry about <laughs> yeah. that. Um, but no, I, I agree with what Ivan says. I think, um, like I talk about the crumb and the invisible biscuit, right? Mm. But at the same time, you have to pick people when they're vulnerable. And that's when they're most vulnerable, when they've just been tapped. They don't really know how to react. Mm. But at the same time, how would you react? Ivan, uh, right. do your reaction right now. Okay. If right. you got, if you, right, I'm going to tap you <laughs> on the shoulder. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Will, okay. come around. Okay. Tap on no, the I'm shoulder. Gonna, I'm going to try and do it properly. Okay. Will is walking. You can hear the heels. <laughs> okay. Right. Hold on. There's a big pink. Did you just tap me? Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Right. This is your reaction. How to be a traitor 101. It's Ivan, it's Ivan, <laughs> I know it, I know, he smiled. <gasps> he didn't take a no, sip of she water. Didn't, she didn't say take off your blindfolds yet! Oh. No, we haven't taken blindfolds off. It's not right. fair. So okay. it's, well, talking about um, episode two, I think there's one man I want to talk about. The man of these first four episodes, uh, clearly we've all liked him, Michael. I love uh, Michael. 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 <laughs> yeah, do you, do you want to say his name, sorry for me? My name's Michael. Um, do you know what? Like Michael, right? That's Michael, his, his famous like, line. Michael <laughs> is moving mad. Like, no, Ma the, my, what does that mean? Sorry, just just slow. I'm I'm 33. What <laughs> what does that mean? Sorry, like he's moving mad. Like the guy, he's moving mad. He's moving. Mm -hmm. Like he's making moves and they're mad. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> he's moving mad. Okay, he's moving mad. Like the guy is yeah. like. Always like doing something. The guy is never resting. Nah, the guy, the guy, the guy. You've used mad. He like was an adverb, saying, but it's an adjective. That's the issue here, right? He's moving madly. English lessons with Ivan <laughs> starts on <laughs> Sunday at nine yeah. on BBC Four. Um, with oh. with what you're trying to say is that like what I feel as well. Like this is what I feel. He was, he played it so wrong, but such a nice guy. Like he was say, like there were certain things he said, but then he would say something else. And say someone else, and it was like, bro, stick to one narrative. Like he had, he, he felt like he had several yeah. narratives. And when you do that, it just feels like everyone's like, oh, they're trying to throw the blame on other people, right? I think what was really interesting for me with Michael is that as soon as Geraldine named Michael in the second episode, you know, he just went all in on mm -hmm. trying to put the blame on someone else. But uh, well, that was I, John I as this, well. I call this a Tom and Ivan strategy. Uh, yeah, just fine. Is there ever is there ever an advantage in going that hard on one person? Yes. Because, well, go on then. I I feel like no no no. no what I'm trying I to say you go you go you go in you go hard on somebody at the round table to push the blame on. The worst thing you can do is sit at the round table and just take it. Because then yeah, but you... this was this was a campaign. Yeah. Like he took, he spent all day. Oh yeah, the walking tunnels. around during the get... mission. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was literally on his way, running on his way to get somebody out of the ground. <laughs> oh, and that. he was like, "Look, um, just so you know, if you don't vote for her, I'm banishing you tonight. You're dead tomorrow." And it's just like, "Look, man, we're digging right now." After episode two, whatever he said, he was seen as a traitor. It doesn't matter what he said. Like he could have said anything, and it was. Oh, that's suspicious. But I'm going to get really, like, free to chess about this. But when you think about this, the fact that somebody would be so foolish, so stupid, as to say, oh, I'm certain they're a traitor, and then risk losing their place in the game, because people will be like, oh, well, you said they were a traitor. You were wrong, so we're voting you up next. Surely no traitor would ever use the Michael strategy. That's actually... A faithful yeah. strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's taking a faithful strategy. Yeah. If you, it, well, I think the further we get through this game, let's say series two, three, four, five, I reckon there will be a traitor who does that. But the point isn't, is it a good strategy? The point is, the spotlight's on you. So even if it works, even if you become a renowned traitor hunter in episode two, uh, and are actually a, a no, not not even that. Sorry, if you become like a intentionally foolish traitor, I, I I got it wrong. I'm so sorry. And you're really a traitor behind that. Amazingly clever. But because you've waged that campaign, because you've done such work to get someone out, all eyes are on you. So I, you know, I think I think it's it's a really it's a it's a fantastic way at this stage in the history of this show to exonerate you and be like, wow, that person was catastrophically wrong. Okay, we believe they are faithful. I don't I I, I don't necessarily think it's true at all. Mm. Reason why is for the fact that right the witch hunt on Amanda right was Kieran. Kieran Kieran did a witch hunt on Amanda. He was the one who planted seed, and I was like, it's the right time for me to do it, just for the fact is I thought she was going to do it to me. He did that, and he was instrumental in finding her. They would turn on him anyway. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? So it doesn't really matter. Like, if you're... 
gunning for someone, gun, gunning for someone, and they end up being a traitor. It, it's ch- most of it's chance anyway. Like there's no, mm. re- so people will still go to you the next day. Actually, maybe he's the, especially nowadays. Not now, if there's a season two, three, four, five, like you said. Mm. N- a, like if you are instrumental in getting a traitor out, then you could be a traitor. And I think it's actually one of the most faithful things you can do to to campaign against someone and get it wrong. And traitors are going to start using that. So you have to be a little bit popular, but not very popular. Liked by the right people, but not by the other people, but definitely not hated by anyone. But also hated hard by, game, isn't it? Hated by, <laughs> hated by <laughs> one person. Well, yeah, yeah. So it is, yeah. You I know what? I'm going to make it simple. Everybody hates me. I yeah. guess it's a bit like if you have a little crumb. And then you actually earn an invisible biscuit. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Can I just say, hashtag invisible biscuit. <laughs> uh, today's hashtag. Uh, I'm selling them, by the way. £103,000 <laughs> invisible biscuits. <laughs> How many have you got in stock? Um, uh, one. Okay. £103,000 for one. And we, a photo of me. I've got infinite ones. It's weird you have to limit yourself to one when they're yeah. literally invisible, but whatever. I'm just looking at Finding Traitors, because obviously that's the name of the game. And there's something really interesting that happens in episode four, uh, which is when Kyle, for the first time, somebody tries to get into the mind of the producers and says, look, obviously there has to be at least one strong female traitor in the midst. Um, it can't just all be guys. And that's when they start looking at Siri for the first time. And that's the first time they do this sort of like meta analysis, trying to get in the mind of the producers and not just think at the game level. Um, Ivan, do you think that's a sort of like dangerous strategy to try to get into the mind of the producers? Because they're going to try to throw you off. I think you're going to be as often right as you're wrong because they're not going to want to play into your hands the entire time and do the most predictable thing. But yeah, I mean, I definitely think metagaming is important in this kind of game. And I think it is, you know, certainly trying to guess, for example, how many traitors there were was metagaming. And yet we all had to do it because we, well, you didn't. Yeah. The rest of us had to do it because, <laughs> but um, you yeah, know, I, I think, I think I was right to start to make some, some assumptions. One older woman would have made sense. And if he then extrapolated that and been like, right, that means there's going to be either one, two younger men or one younger man and one younger woman. That would have worked for both the American well, series. Well, it did. Well, Kier- Kieran said yeah. there has to be a matriarch. Yeah, there yeah. has to be, it's either Amanda or um, Andrea. That's what he said. If and you stick with those things as well and carry them through, it will get you to some easier eliminations. We've seen situations in the UK show and I'm sure we'll see situations in the American show as well where stick with those ideas, hold on to them for as long as you survive and it, things will become, start to become really obvious. Uh, we got rid of two women who were looking for a man. Would have been so useful uh, in terms of searching for you. Yeah. I know they found Kieran and that was enough, but like even in the round table before that, when they were looking for a man and ended up getting rid of Maddie, bad news for guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, be persuasive sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, do you think it's important sometimes to just get into the mind of the producers and stop yeah, thinking of about how they frame the game? Of course. You, you've got to think, <clears throat> the game's bigger than what it looks, right? It's not just these players. There's, There's... For us, we're very lucky because we, it was very underproduced, right? So it weren't like they told us to say anything or anything like that. But at the same time, there's there's a power in production, right? So they're gonna they're not gonna be like let's all put let's put Alex, Alyssa, and Aisha Amanda, just names Aisha, an a. Aisha Aisha in yeah. Well, Aisha, that's how they did in the US. They all begin with C. <laughs> they're, <all> C. <laughs> they're, they're definitely not gonna yeah. spin spin a wheel and choose three traitors. They're they're gonna pick people that. They think, okay, this person might be able to bring this, this, and this to the table. But when you think about it, there is one danger with getting into the head of the producers, which is that sometimes you just, you just get it wrong. I remember one of the big reasons why I voted for Nikki at the beginning was, oh, she's got such an inspirational life story. She's got such a good reason to need and want the money that she must be a traitor. And that was completely <laughs> stupid. If you second guess, the, if you try to second guess the game too much, you're going to be as wrong as you're going to be right. And that's a great example of that. And talking about stupid things happening at the round table, I've got to talk about the note. The note! The note! I've wait, wait, wait. So oh my God. Wait. That. So, for context, if people don't remember, what happened was that at the end of the round table in episode three, Kate is just sitting there. And when she stands up, she drops a note out of her pocket with the names of wait. two people, which are supposed. <laughs> and immediately, um, I can't remember who grabs it. Grabs it. It's um, Stephanie. And immediately, Stephanie grabs the note and starts thinking. Oh, um, are these the next people to be murdered? No, 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 wait, wait, wait. I have like <laughs> one main thing Go on. to say about this. Go on. No. It fell out of a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> it fell out of a skirt. Do you want to know where it can Yeah. Like, where did she, she do that? She did pockets, bro. I'm like, where was she hiding this <laughs> note? Like, 
I'm so sorry. And then somebody actually said it. I was like, yeah, she had a note up her skirt. I was like, <laughs> where? Why would you hide a note up your skirt? Well, I can take it that, a few places. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, <laughs> it came out of us. It came out of us. skirt. <laughs> like, and everybody, and, and everybody's went nuts on this note, right? And yeah, it was just, <laughs> I, I don't know. It was just, I don't know if she, it was, I, I would think it's a great thing to do on purpose in the future. <laughs> like, yeah. I really do. But like, you know what? Coming into the game, so I had a sort of list of like the most unhinged strategies that I considered going into the game. And then I was like, I'm not going to do it. Stuff like pretending my dog had died to just like, because nobody wants to vote for the guy with a dead dog. I do. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that was one strategy that I abandoned. And one of them was to drop a fake note because we didn't see each other handwriting much. So I could have just dropped a fake note somewhere. Well, somebody actually said that's brand that's that's Brandy's handwriting or that's Kate's that's handwriting. Kate's handwriting. And I was like, how do you know that? You've known her for three days, bro. How do you know All that? you've seen her is write Michael. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, she spelled Michael wrong in that handwriting. <laughs> 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 but then somebody did say, yeah, yeah that's Kate's handwriting. Mm. And I was just like, <laughs> Honestly, Come on, man. Like, so much about this note just doesn't make sense. This note just did not make sense. So, like, <laughs> they've crossed out these two people. But they wrote nobody else's name. I, was her. Ivan, what's your take on this note? Do you think she did it on purpose to cause chaos? No, I don't. I think, I, I think it would have been a very good thing if she had. But I think... For me, what interests me is what happened next. And this is going to bring me to my new recurring segment. What would you do? Because oh. there's two interesting things here. One, Stephanie, right? Let's just focus on her and then let's come back and think about what Siri did afterwards. Stephanie took the note to someone, right? Now, that's a very interesting way of doing it. First of all, you've got to take it to someone you truly believe is a faithful. Otherwise, it can be used against you. But second of all, she took it to a trial! <laughs> <laughs> it's like when Meryl got a shield and went, well, I've got a shield. <laughs> Same thing. Cool. Um, I, I actually believe, and I don't know what you think about this, but I actually believe the, the, th the first thing you should do if you find that kind of evidence is sit on it, put it up your skirt, and, <laughs> and sit on it, not literally, but you could, uh, for a day or two and see what happens. Because it could be so useful. Like if the first thing it says is, uh, you know, whatever their name is, is getting murdered next, if they then get murdered, you've got damning evidence. But, okay, but, 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 hear but, me out. Go on, go on. If she had some sort of inclination that Siri might have been a traitor, mm. then giving her the list is genius. Because if you're the traitor, you're like, oh, well, I'm just going to I'm just gonna murder the people in this list. Because then everyone will be like, oh, well, these people on the list that I found on Kate have been murdered. It's got to be Kate. And they didn't do that. And that felt like a missed opportunity. Well, this is the second what would you do, right? Because do you do that? Well, I don't know. Because... Then they would say it's Kate. The next day they'd vote Kate. They'd find out that Kate was a was faithful, faithful yeah. and the finger would point straight towards Siri. I only showed you Siri. Now Kate's gone, she was a faithful, so you must have murdered the first person on that list. So actually that's the wrong answer. Sorry. Boo. I just think, Man. right? <laughs> with, with, with the whole thing, you take a crumb, and oh, wait, 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 no, 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 and it meant nothing. It was, but that's what we say. Everybody had these crumbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crumbs that meant nothing the whole time. Meaningless crumbs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Meaningless. <laughs> meaningless crumbs. <laughs> just, <laughs> just gold yeah. yeah. They were all invisible biscuits. All mm. every. N I don't. I can't think of a time where I've watched this season so far, so far, mm. or our, our, the UK version where there was actually any evidence. We lived off invisible biscuits. <laughs> we did. We did. Oh, I know I lost so much weight. <laughs> yeah. uh, you'll find they were very visible the biscuits. The only real on the biscuits are the biscuits I fed everyone. I was like, this is the traitor. This is the traitor. Here, I have a biscuit. I have a biscuit. I have a biscuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop munching on these ones. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This is very precious. But it's true, yeah, though, right? Yeah. Like, every bit of ev evidence, right? And how many times have we used that? We need mm. to find evidence. I was like, oh. there's no evidence. There was like, a note. <laughs> the first shred yeah, of physical evidence. But that was the first part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is why I loved the note. I got yeah. excited about the note, the note because I was like, there's a actual physical like visible bit a of visible biscuit. But yeah, <laughs> a, no, but it was a visible crumb. It's what I like. It's like this is 
it's open to interpretation as well. So you look at it and it's got nothing to do with the traitors. Yeah. It has no no real you open the viability. Note and it says eggs, flour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's got no viability. Like there's yeah. no, it, it literally means nothing that mm. that, that note. Mm. But it caused so much commotion. And that just shows that one person can say something, you can find something, and yeah, just in the future, don't put notes up your skirt. Because mm. they might never last. <laughs> they might. Well, that was a good lesson in strategy. Thanks, man. Yeah. Or, or last topic on strategy, actually, is about the murders. I need yeah. to think about what is happening with these murders. Because I found there's no consistency whatsoever. I'm looking at, you know, the first... Um, I'm looking at the first episode and the people just murdered the Redzer because he was allowed an admission. Yeah. And then later they keep people who cause drama and then well, later <clears> they keep people who had fingers pointed at them. Well, it's sometimes out of reverse psychology. Is like, well, if you were the traitors, yeah, yeah. you have to make these decisions. Um, yeah. So you have to make these decisions. Is no strategy the best strategy? No, nah, not at all. Like for me, it was... Like my strategy obviously was befriend and betray. I wanted to prevent people, murder them, and then I would like... And that's what I stuck with most of the game, right? And... But at the same time, you have to think, well, I befriended three people. Who, who do I, who would I go with? So it was the two things that we'd go for, the, like I said earlier, the, the people that were the most intellectual that we felt, felt threatened by. Yeah, so people like in the game that we were playing, that the people that we knew, like we thought you worked, we didn't know you was doing what you was doing, but Ivan didn't tell anyone and was Amos, lawyer. Ivan and Amos and, and Faye as well were like mm. clearly in my mind, probably... I wouldn't say most intellectual. I think it's the wrong thing to say. But at that time, they were mo the most threatening in terms of strategy. So, but then also breaking up clicks. That was a big part of our game. So breaking up clicks, like and that's Claire, what they do in the first episode with yeah, Bravo game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's what that's what that's the strategy is breaking up the click because people disperse. Then they have to build new relationship with new people, and it just it brings that chaos but the things that what they're doing they were just firing random and i understand the strategy behind and that's it what they did. would you have done that because nah. the second uh, in the nah. third episode they just murdered bam for no reason for no reason and i like just that to guy and i just felt so sorry for I him. Love this house. i've got to say there's an advantage for rolling dice when you're murdering i've got to say it like it, if people are going to try and guess the meaning of a murder but you just rolled a six and the sixth person on your list died i like that strategy. so you know you're 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 a faithful at heart right you you'd always want to play as a faithful right yes unless recruited what? okay so if you was a traitor yes would you use the random rule or what rule what would you have you must have a strategy i, I right? do i do have a strategy yeah sh he's not going to share I'm it not share it with you <laughs> Oh, right. he's waiting for the, the all stars. The exit's this way. Thank you for coming. Yeah, no, but but later. no, being honest, would you is that a strategy you consider? Random rolling? Yeah. Yes, one of two. But the other one I would actually use. But okay. having said that, I'm never gonna be I, I would never be a traitor. If I got to go on the show again, I would still be a faithful. But if I'm recruited, it makes sense to, because we know what happened to Alex. But if I were recruited, I, I would accept, of course. And at that point I would then adopt my strategy. And of course I'm not gonna tell you. So what anybody is. who um is in the all star cast, he would Say yes to being recruited. Yeah. Yeah, I would say yes to being a traitor. <laughs> yes, so would I. Yeah. I would no, I yes. wouldn't anymore. Actually, I wouldn't anymore. Really? Would you want to try to be a faithful? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I had one day. As then a you faithful. get murdered on the, like. I had a half a day as a faithful where we got tapped, and we had to f figure out who the other traitors were. But then mm. you get banished because I'm going to be honest. If I'm doing all stars with you, you're my first vote, the and then I'm doing Amanda, and then I'm doing Alyssa. Yeah. yeah, of course. But mm. you're going to have, mate. The all stars will be in four four seasons time, mate. I might seem ruthless now, but there's going to be some ruthless people out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, they're in the next few seasons. That's what I believe anyway. Like, I believe there's going to be some real... Real, but everyone's gonna part and gift everyone. <laughs> Let's be honest. Constant mate, if you're like, no, what, I just lost the game. Nah, part and gift. Ivan, bye, mate. Yeah, you ain't winning this game. They're gonna have to restart the show every you know day. Just... Mate, I promise. There, there's gonna be rewritten rules, yeah, man. They're gonna have to. They're gonna have like, to. Oops, let me drop a note mate, for the I'll list of all the traitors. I just do it for a laugh, man. I'm like, ah, oh, part and gift and just play. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> gonna <laughs> traitor. I know. That's a brilliant yeah. idea. Yeah. I, I did. I'd go back as a faithful and I'd be like, part and gift. Just yes. to yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And, then, and then I would lie on my way out. I would go, hey, I was a traitor. What are they going to do? Who's going to yeah, stop me from saying so it? Funny. The yeah. old part and gift. The old part and, everyone part and gift to everyone else. Yeah, oh. but that's the thing, man. Everyone, literally, like, I would never got, I'd never take away what we've been through, but I could never just do it again straight away. In one sentence, then, how did you find these first four episodes and what do you think is coming next? 
I've got to think about a whole sentence. Here we go. I think it started slow for an American audience, took some time to get into it, but just finally now I'm starting to actually care about the characters. Wolf? I would say I wasn't really engaged at the beginning, but I am so much more engaged now because, as Ivan said, I think we're starting to actually build a relationship with the characters. There's only one star of this and it's Fergus. So this is now officially <laughs> a Fergus Stan podcast. And from now on, this is called uh, It's Just a Fergus. Uh, <laughs> and all we're going to do is just constantly talk about Fergus. I love Fergus. I love Fergus. I want him to be in the castle. Yeah. I want him All to stars? host it next year. Yeah. Yeah, get out of the culture. Fergus. Mate, would it annoy you if he went, Hi, I'm Fergus. I'm like, No! He's not even Scottish! <laughs> that would really upset me. Can you imagine? He comes to you and he's just got a Kentucky accent. <laughs> hey, I'm uh, Fergus. Hey, yeah, I'll, I'll be so annoyed if he's not. What was that? Do it again, mate. <laughs> do that again. This... Hey, I'm Fergus. Okay, and this I time do a it. Kentucky accent. Hey, <laughs> hey, I'm Fergus. One more time, mate. I don't think he can do it. No, I don't think the microphone's got that one. Just one <laughs> there it is. Yeah. I, can do it. It. I, I like Fergus. for the first time, mate. I like him. Yeah, but yeah. It's yeah. um, it's a great show so far. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's us done. First four episodes of The Traitors US. Um, and so much more. We'll be back next week. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to make sure that you actually catch it, you should probably subscribe to us on all of these platforms. Yeah, and if you liked it, give us a little five star review. Always helps on your favorite podcast app. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. I am Ryan. You can follow me on Instagram at the gram of Ryan. I am Will slash Wilf slash Wilfred. Follow me at Wilfred Webster Official on Instagram. I'm Ivan, and you can follow me at Ivan Brett on Twitter and Instagram. Well, on that note, uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. And from us, it's goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>